Hey, what's up YouTube? Luke the Window Cleaner, Brianna. You are watching Window Cleaning Resources YouTube channel. And today we're gonna go over our, well, in our opinion, the five mistakes that newbies make the most when they first start out window cleaning. Thanks for watching windowcleaner.com. Make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. For new guys, one of the biggest mistakes you're going to make is underestimating jobs. So um, one of those jobs is French windows in storms. How many times do you think we've underestimated French and storm window jobs? We haven't in a long time. Because <laughs> we've learned from our mistakes. Yeah. What are some of the things we do to uh, make sure we're getting a clear scope of the work? During the estimate, we go through and we check all the windows to make sure that they can be opened from the inside. So we determine if the storms have to come up from the outside or the inside. Quote it in person. Yes. Like, yeah. Never quote a storm job over the phone. Yeah. Um, and you can still absolutely underestimate uh, storefronts, commercial work. It's not just storms and French panes, but make sure you're always taking account for everything that could go wrong, will go wrong. And uh, you don't wanna underbid yourself. Um, I think it's something that takes experience and practice, but um, over time, for you new guys, you'll definitely get it down. But underestimating jobs uh, is definitely one of the biggest newbie mistakes that we, we hear about and that we- Know how much you're worth as well. So just because everyone in your area Sorry, just because everyone in your area is charging six dollars doesn't mean for a window on a residential home doesn't mean that you have to. If you offer a better service, you can charge more. Yep, and that same that same philosophy goes along with storefronts and commercial work too. Just because they're charging, Lord forbid, twenty five or fifty cents a pane, don't uh, provide a better service and charge higher prices. And uh, I think your company will grow faster, and you will appreciate it in the long run. difficulties with closing out and that all really starts with when you first come up to a window. I should already know what side of the window I'm going to close out on. I should already know where the fingerprints are. Uh, it's just, and you'll get more and more used to that the more you clean windows. And what you'll see guys do is they will cut in, start out pretty strong, and then when they get to the bottom they go into like a panic and they're not really sure where they should close out. And then they, you see them play around here for too long and then close out. And now a good rule of thumb is how high your window or how high your water is up. How many squeegees can you fit in there? I can fit two and a little bit uh, drag marks if I was gonna do it straight across. So if I'm going to fan this window, I should be able to do it in three moves. And so you just eliminate all of that fussing around at the bottom and close out on whatever side's the most comfortable for you. Something I want to add with leaving mistakes on the window is the most common places for a guy to leave mistakes when they're new um, is closing out also. So they'll typically leave a mistake here. It's from kind of getting stuck over here and not knowing to just slide across. And then you'll see, usually we're handy, one, we're usually holding the squeegee incorrectly. So we're, our hands are where the handle is touching the frame. So when we get here, my knuckles and my hands touching the frame, and I'm leaving gaps of water here, or if you're closing out the bottom, the same thing. So, how to fix that is when you get to where you're gonna close out on your last pass, don't screw around, just pull straight across. I'm leaving my hands out of the way, and I always tell, when I'm training, I tell them to flick the tool in. So you want to flick it inwards so that the rubber is actually bending into the frame, ensuring that you're removing all of the water. I'm still do my flip. Another uh, big newbie mistake is drips. Um, rule of thumb, when you're inside, it doesn't matter a home or a commercial building or whatever it may be, if your washer is dripping water, it is too wet. 
every single time we come into a business, and especially homes, we wring out our washer and we dump our hip buckets to make sure that we're not carrying any excess water. Uh, a good way to prevent drips is using the two-handed technique when you're inside. So you'll see all the drips are being caught by my washer. So on my final pass, I'll move my washer out of the way and then what's left on the frame is extremely minimal water. Another good tip for preventing drips, so when you're done with the window and you're moving on, you'll put your squeegee to your washer like so, so it's catching all the drips. And when I move to the next window, there will be no drips on the floor. And if you're going to be moving, say when you're done cleaning a window, and you go to holster your squeegee, put it like this, then into your bucket, and that will also help prevent drips. Also, when you're putting your uh, washer into your hip bucket, you don't want to slam it in when you're on the inside. If you do so, you'll end up with drips everywhere. So you just want to gently put him in when you're on the inside of a restaurant or especially at home. If you're new, I would strongly suggest to use drop cloths on the inside of homes, especially where it's carpeted or hardwood floors. It doesn't matter. I would just use drop cloths to prevent any drips. And our next uh, top newbie mistake, uh, what we see is guys will mop too long. So especially for storefront accounts, um, something that is cleaned on a regular schedule. We'll see guys kind of do this right here. Well, actually it's much slower. So they just spend so much time mopping and it's so much wasted time. Uh, I think everyone puts so much emphasis on on removing the water with the squeegee, which is good, and you need to, but you should also put some emphasis on how fast you're using your mop. So, especially for maintenance cleans, a lot of times what we'll do is we mop and squeegee at the same time, and that will be just fine, especially if the account's being cleaned once a week or once every two weeks. But if you can't do that, then you could mop the whole window down just yep. quicker. Be efficient. There you go, and that's all it needs. Now, that doesn't mean don't pay attention to what you're doing, and if the window is really dirty, you may want to use an abrasive pad or the end of your mop to remove any kind of uh, fingerprints or whatever it may be. But this is a huge waste of time to sit and thoroughly mop the window. We always say to try to get a good stance and center yourself in the window so that you've got a full reach over here and a full reach over here if you need. Another problem we see a lot is people blaming a tool for their mistakes or the rubber for their mistakes or, you know, um, just pointing the blame everywhere else and not actually thinking maybe it could be your technique. If you put a liquidator in my hand, I'm like, oh, this tool sucks. But in reality, it's me who sucks whenever it comes down to it because I don't know how to use it. So when you're first starting out, say you get an accelerator or you get, you know, an Ettore super channel and you're using it and you're seeing lines and you're seeing kisses on the side here, it's most likely you and not the tool. It's just that you don't know how to use the tool yet. You're not sure how to check your rubber for debris. Uh, you're putting too much pressure on the squeegee or not enough. You're too close to the glass. You're too far away from the glass. There's so many so many other things that it could be other than the tool because the tool was made to work correctly. And so if you find yourself like, oh, this tool is just so bad, it's probably not the tool. It's just that you haven't learned how to use it right. We'll leave a link in the description below, but we actually have a video called Troubleshooting Your Window Cleaning, and it runs you through pretty detailed on our top troubleshooting uh, suggestions when you get these mistakes with tools. So we'll leave that link below. All right, guys, that's it for our top newbie mistakes. So hope this uh, video has helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, we're going to jam out to this mall music. Mall music. <laughs>
All right, guys. Hey, make sure you tune back in. Window Clean Resource uploads every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Hit the bell. You'll get notified whenever we upload. Yep. And then don't forget to check out our own YouTube channel, Luke the Window Cleaner. We upload every single Wednesday over there. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching windowcleaner.com on YouTube. If you liked the video, please thumbs up and subscribe. And make sure to check back every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday so you don't miss a video. And if you just need some more Luke in your life, check out his channel at Luke the Window Cleaner on YouTube.